Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss the most frequently asked Java OP interview questions explained in a clear, complete and beginner friendly way. Let's begin. What is object oriented programming? Object oriented programming or OOP is a programming model where the entire application is built around objects. Objects represent real world things. They contain data in fields and behavior in methods. OOP helps developers build a software that is modular, organized, reusable and easier to maintain. It breaks a large problem into smaller manageable objects. Java heavily follows OOP principles which include encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction and polymorphism. These four pillars form the foundation of Java's design. Next, what is a class and what is an object? A class is a blueprint or template that defines what an object should contain and how it should behave. It describes the structure. An object is a real instance created from the class. It is the actual entity that holds data and performs actions. For example, a car class describes properties like color and model and actions like start or accelerate. But an actual car on the road is an object created from that class. Next question, what is encapsulation? Encapsulation is the concept of grouping related data and behavior inside a single unit and restricting direct access to the internal state. It means protecting the object's data and only allowing controlled access through methods. Encapsulation provides security, prevents unintended modifications and keeps the object's internal structure hidden. In simple terms, it is like putting data in a capsule and opening it only through controlled methods. Next, what is inheritance? Inheritance allows one class to acquire properties and behaviors from another class. The class that inherits is called the child class and the class being inherited from is the parent class. Inheritance promotes reusability by avoiding duplication. It also allows you to create specialized classes based on existing behavior. Through inheritance, Java supports hierarchical class structures and helps implement one of the key OOP principles, polymorphism. Next question, what is polymorphism? Polymorphism means many forms. It allows the same method name to behave differently depending on which object is calling it. In Java, Polymorphism appears in two forms, compile time polymorphism through method overloading and runtime polymorphism through method overriding. Polymorphism helps you write flexible code that works with parent references and executes child specific behavior at runtime. Next, what is abstraction? Abstraction means showing only the essential features and hiding unnecessary internal details. This principle allows developers to focus on the what instead of the how. Java achieves abstraction using abstract classes and interfaces. These mechanisms let you define behavior without exposing the implementation. Next, what is method overloading? Method overloading occurs when multiple methods have the same name but different parameters. It allows you to create multiple variations of the same operation to support different inputs. Overloading increases readability and happens during compile time, making it a form of static polymorphism. Next, what is method? Overriding. Method overriding happens when a child class redefines a method from its parent class to provide its own behavior. It helps achieve runtime polymorphism where the method that gets executed depends on the actual object instead of the reference type. Overriding is used whenever child classes need to change or extend the behavior of parent classes. Next question, what is the difference between overloading and overriding? Overloading occurs in the same class and changes parameters. Overriding occurs across classes through inheritance and changes the method's behavior. Overloading happens at compile time overriding happens at runtime. 
Interviewers frequently ask this to test your understanding of Java polymorphism. Next, what is the this keyword? The this keyword refers to the current object. It is used to differentiate instance variables from parameters when the names are the same. It helps avoid confusion when working with constructors, setters and instance methods. Next question, what is the super keyword? The super keyword refers to the parent class. It is used to call parent class variables, parent methods and parent constructors. It helps when child classes want to reuse some of the parent functionality without rewriting it. Next, what are constructors in Java? A constructor is a special block that initializes an object when it is created. It has the same name as the class and does not return anything. Constructors are used to set initial values, allocate resources or prepare the object for use. Next, what is constructor overloading? Constructor overloading means having multiple constructors in the same class with different parameter list. This provides flexibility in object creation. You can create an object with default values, custom values or partial values based on the available constructors. Next, what is an abstract class? An abstract class is a class that cannot be instantiated and may contain both abstract and concrete methods. It provides a partial blueprint where common behavior is implemented in the abstract class and specialized behavior is defined in subclasses. Abstract classes are used when multiple related classes share common structure but still need individual implementations. Next question, what is an interface in Java? An interface is a fully abstract contract that defines what a class must do without specifying how it must do it. A class that implements an interface provides the actual behavior. Modern Java interfaces can contain default methods, static methods, and private helper methods. Interfaces support multiple inheritance of type and are key to abstraction, flexibility, and clean architecture. Next question, what is a Java bean? A Java bean is a simple reusable software component that follows a few standard rules. It must have a public no argument constructor. Its fields should be private. It must provide public getters and setters to access those fields and it must be serializable. Java beans are used heavily in frameworks like Spring, JSP and Java EE for component based programming. They promote encapsulation, reusability and easy configuration. Next, what is the difference between a Java bean and a POJO? Both are simple objects but a POJO has no strict rules. It is just a plain Java object that may or may not have getters, setters or constructors. A Java bean has strict conventions including private fields, public getters and setters, a public no or constructor and must be serializable. Interviewers ask this to check whether you understand Java's component model and object conventions. Next, what is composition in OOP? Composition is a strong form of association where one class contains another class as part of its internal structure. It represents a has a relationship. For example, a car has an engine. Composition creates objects that cannot exist independently. If the containing object is destroyed, the composed objects are also destroyed. Composition is preferred over inheritance because it provides better flexibility and reduces tight coupling. Next, what is aggregation in OOP? Aggregation is also a has a relationship but with weaker ownership. For example, a school has students but a student can exist even if the school is removed. Aggregation describes relationships where the lifetime of objects is independent of each other. Understanding aggregation versus composition helps you design clean maintainable systems. Next, what is association in OOP? Association is a broad relationship between two independent classes. It can be one to one, one to many, many to one 
or many to many. It does not imply ownership, both objects can exist independently. For example, a teacher is associated with multiple students. Association is foundational for modeling real-world relationships in software. Next question, what is coupling in Java? Coupling refers to how much one class depends on another class. Tight coupling means classes are closely dependent, making the system difficult to change. Loose coupling means classes depend on abstractions rather than concrete implementations. Loose coupling improves flexibility, testability, and maintainability. Frameworks like Spring are built entirely around loose coupling using interfaces and dependency injection. Next question, what is cohesion in OOP? Cohesion describes how well the responsibilities of class are related to each other. High cohesion means a class does one focused job and is easy to understand and maintain. Low cohesion means a class performs multiple unrelated tasks and becomes difficult to manage. The single responsibility principle directly promotes high cohesion. High cohesion creates clean modular designs. Next, what is runtime polymorphism? Runtime polymorphism occurs when the method that gets executed is determined at runtime based on the actual object. This happens through method overriding. A parent reference can point to a child object and Java decides at runtime which method to call. Runtime polymorphism enables flexible dynamic behavior and is heavily used in frameworks like Spring and Hibernate. Next, what is the difference between shallow copy and deep copy? A shallow copy copies only the reference values of nested objects and not the actual objects. A deep copy creates entirely new copies of all nested objects, making the new object fully independent of the original. Deep copying is safer but more expensive. Shallow copying is faster but may cause unintended modifications if both objects share the same internal data. Next. What is object cloning in Java? Object cloning is the process of creating a copy of an object using Java's clone mechanism. Cloning can be shallow or deep depending on how the clone method is implemented. Cloning is often used in scenarios where object creation is expensive and a copy is needed with the same initial state. Although cloning is powerful, it must be used carefully to avoid shared mutable state and inconsistent object behavior. Next question, what is the difference between is a and has a relationships? In object oriented design, is a represents inheritance and has a represents composition or aggregation. An I is a relationship means one class is a specialized form of another class. For example, a dog is an animal. This is implemented using inheritance. A has a relationship means one class contains another class as a part of its structure. For example, a car has an engine. This is implemented using composition or aggregation. Interviewers use this question to test your design judgment. Many beginners misuse inheritance when they should choose composition. Is a relationships create tight coupling and should only be used when the child truly behaves like the parent. Has a relationships promote a loose coupling and allow more flexible, maintainable designs. Composition is strongly preferred in modern Java architectures because it avoids many inheritance related problems such as fragile base classes and unintended method overrides. Next question, what is the principle of favor composition over inheritance? This principle is one of the most important guidelines in modern object oriented design. It means, instead of extending classes and inheriting their behavior, you should build classes by combining independent reusable components. Inheritance creates a rigid hierarchy where child classes depend heavily on parent behavior. Any change in the parent may break child classes. Composition on the other hand allows you to plug in behavior dynamically by using interfaces and injected objects. Frameworks like Spring, design patterns like Strategy, Decorator and Adapter, and architectures like Clean Architecture strongly depend on composition. 
This principle gives you flexibility, testability, and better maintainability. Next, what is object identity versus object equality? This is one of the most misunderstood topics in OOP interviews. Object identity means two references point to the same physical object in memory. It answers the question, are these two references pointing to the exact same object? Object equality means two objects may be different in memory but represent the same logical value. It answers the question, do these objects mean the same thing? Java uses the equals operator for identity and the equals method for logical equality. This concept is crucial for understanding collections, hash maps, caching and object comparisons. Next question, what is the difference between immutable and mutable objects? A mutable object can change its internal state after creation. Strings in Java used to be mutable in older languages, but Java made them immutable for performance and security. An immutable object cannot change its value once created. Examples include string, integer and local date. Immutable objects are thread safe, easier to cache and prevent accidental modifications. They are widely used in concurrent programming, functional programming and in designing value objects. Mutable objects are more flexible but need careful handling in multi-threaded environments. Next, what is method? Hiding in Java. Method hiding occurs when a child class defines a static method with the same signature as a static method in the parent class. Unlike method overriding, method hiding does not support polymorphism. The method executed depends on the reference type, not the object type. Interviewers ask this to test whether you understand how Java handles static methods and why they cannot participate in runtime polymorphism. Next, what is object association and why is it important? Association represents a general relationship between two independent objects. It is the basic building block for designing interactions between objects. Association can be one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, or many to many. Unlike composition or aggregation, association does not imply ownership. Objects can exist without each other. Understanding association is crucial for designing real world models, database relationships, and domain driven systems. So, these are the frequently asked OOP questions in the interviews.